Effective tomorrow, Tuesday, July 27, the curfew hours will be adjusted as follows. On Mondays to Saturdays, the curfew hours will be from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following morning. On Sundays and public holidays, the curfew hours will be 3 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following morning. While we have not mandated closing hours for businesses, we would expect that establishments will generally close one hour before curfews to allow employees and patrons to be able to get public transportation or otherwise to go home. We've also put in place tighter operating hours for beaches and rivers as follows. Mondays to Saturdays, beaches and rivers will be open from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Sundays and public holidays, beaches and rivers will be open from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, reduced capacity. We had changed the measures um, under the last order of the Disaster Risk Management Act where we transition to uh, what we call capacity limits. So some establishments were subject to capacity limits of 70%. For example, places of worship, gyms, bars that operate under a club license, uh, dining establishments, etc. Now, we have made some adjustments to that. Effective Tuesday, July 27, the 70% capacity limit that applies to these establishments will be reduced to 50%. Also, the existing limit for small events is being reduced. Currently, the limit for small events uh, is either 100 persons or 60% of capacity of the venue, whichever is lower. So effective Tuesday, July 27th, the capacity limit for small events will also be reduced from 60% to 50%. Therefore, the number of persons permitted at a small event will be still 100 persons or 50% of the venue capacity, whichever is lower. We will continue to monitor the situation and determine the measures that will apply effective August 11. Our focus in crafting those measures will be on trying to control spread sufficiently to allow us to reopen schools to facilitate structured face-to-face -face learning in September. That is an imperative for the government and indeed for all the parents and children who have had a really very difficult time during this pandemic. We are slated to receive, as we have always projected, significant supplies of vaccines starting in August. We have seen from the experience of other countries, and indeed from our own experience, how insidious this virus is and how quickly spikes can occur. The significant increase in all our early warning indicators suggests that we are in the early stages of our third wave. A third wave which we, I wouldn't say we predicted, but we always expected that we would have a third wave, as many countries around the world are now experiencing. The only way to avoid spikes during this new wave is for every single Jamaican 
every man, woman, and child, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, to take personal responsibility, to exercise extreme care, caution, and diligence in observing the protocols. Even now, with the third wave, which ministers pointed out, how pervasive the Delta variant, which is a new variant, which is uh, virulent and spreads rapidly, that persons who are vaccinated, who still get infected, but they don't fear the worst of the disease that the virus triggers, which is the COVID-19. They may get a few symptoms, but they generally don't end up in hospital. And it is rare that they have a, a, a fatal event as a result of being infected. What we are seeing is that most persons who are admitted to hospital, both in the United States and the United Kingdom and other countries that have published data, the vast majority in the 90s in terms of percentage are persons who are unvaccinated. So what I'm about to say may offend some persons, but the reality is that the unvaccinated population uh, could become the foundation on which the third waves are carried. And therefore, I think every single Jamaican, when the opportunity comes, when your time comes, you should do what is in your best interest, what is in your parents' and grandparents' best interest, and what is in the interest of the country, in the interest of your children to return to school, take the vaccine. Take the vaccine. It is really unfair to ask, well, not to ask, but to watch others take it and hope to get a free ride on the disappearance of the virus from the society. It is not going to work like that. As we have seen, this virus intends to stick around. And the only way that it will go away is if a large percentage of the population, we are targeting 65%, Minister Tufton, my, my, my personal view, non-clinical view, is that we may very well have to seek to go even higher than the 65% uh, to, to truly have an impact on this disease. As we have seen in other countries that have had uh, inoculation, immunization rates, we take Israel, for example, in the 80s, going up to the 90s, and they are still getting um, infected and they are still seeing um, challenges. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Jamaicans, friends, brethren and sisters, we, we, you know, this is serious now. Um, we recognize the stress, the psychological strain, the emotional strain. We heard the cries. We tried to give a little relief. But this pandemic, this virus is serious. And I, I can only appeal to the good sense and reason of the people of Jamaica. You would see persons in the taxis, for example, or on the buses, not wearing masks. These are close quarter gatherings. You would see people moving about with a mask under their chin or hanging from one ear. Uh, you would have seen uh, various videos circulating of people socializing in ways that uh, can only help in accelerating the spread. Each and every Jamaican needs to take great care and precaution. We can't overemphasize this, that the virus is not a respecter of anyone. You can get infected, whether you are at a party, or in church, or at school, or at work, in the bus, 
in your private vehicle with passengers, playing football with friends, or at the beach. Anywhere that human beings gather, the potential for infection exists. We have two ways of fighting the virus. Three ways, actually. One way is for the government always to be doing this. For me and the minister and the CMO, knowing the dangers that we face and what the risks are. To come and say, we're going to limit your movement and limit your gatherings. That is not sustainable. And we are seeing right around the world where populations are reacting to this, even though the actions are in their best interest. Another way is for every citizen to act responsibly and follow through on the non-clinical protocols, meaning wearing your mask, maintaining a physical distance, sanitizing your hands regularly. If you're ill, stay at home. If you know you are um, infected, isolate. If you have traveled and you are not vaccinated, maintain the 14 days. All these measures, these non-clinical measures, will help to reduce the spread. But what we have seen as the most successful measure is for persons to take the vaccines. 